All right, welcome functions folks to your very first video. You are in the right spot. You have clicked on the right link. Um, one thing that you may do, if it's not sitting there in front of you, you may look for the PDF. If you have a printout of exactly what you see here, you're in the right spot. And if you don't, you might want to pause the video, print off this note, and um, and then start filling it out. At any time, of course, you could just copy the copy the um, the video out on, into your notes. Also, remember that this is a video. You can pause it. You can take as much time as you like uh, to write things down, uh, write things down, or whatever. Go get a snack, or you know, whatever. Um, uh, the way these videos will work is we almost always start with a three-minute review. The idea is a three-minute review. You try first, pause the video, or try before you start the video, try the three-minute review, and then I'll take it up, and then we get into the lesson. So if you haven't tried the three-minute review, you should pause the video and try it, and then we're going to continue straight off. So for this one, it's a sort of a typical problem from years gone past. And there's a number of ways you can do it. And that's this is sort of the point of this problem is, is just that there's lots of ways to atta attack this question. One might be, and this might be like a grade 8 or grade 9 method, um, just finding a table of values. And this idea of the table of values is we know the width and the length have to be 30 apart. And we're just looking for the area to be 1,800 then. And we keep guessing and checking until we find the uh, right answer. There's the right answer there. Another table of values is you might want to find find lengths and widths that have areas of 1,800. That give you areas of 1,800, and then you just keep guessing and checking until you see the the difference between them is 30. Right? The difference here is is 170. Difference there is 70. The difference there is 30. So we know that's the right answer. And that gives us a little smiley face. Um, and that's a table of values method. Another method, and this is probably the method that you chose. This is more of an algebraic method from grade 10. Was, you know, from the diagram, we know the width and the length. And the length has to be 30 more than the width, which allows us to set up an algebraic equation. Um, area is length times width. W plus 30 uh, times V, we multiply through and get that expression. This goes on to the other side. Then this actually factors. We could use the formula if we like. We end up with two solutions. One is inadmissible because we wouldn't think of the width as being a negative number. And then we get the other answer, which the width is, is 30. A yet another method might be a graph, right? We set up a, a model. A equals uh, W squared plus 30W. That looks like the algebraic model that we had up here, but we could think of this as as a parabola, right? And then graph the parabola where where the dependent axis is the area, the independent axis is the the x-axis is the w, and we're looking for well, where is the area equal to 1800? Where is the output equal to 1800? And we can get that either, you know, by doing a nice graph or using graphing technology. So this this shows you many of the ways that we could represent functions. And that's what today's lesson is all about, is, is doing some review on functions. Um, again, remember, if I'm going too fast, you pause. Um, functions, the, the lessons will always, almost always have an expectation here. This is straight from the curriculum document, what we're expected to learn. And essentially, this is what our tests and our exams are, are all about, is, is what kind of questions do I have that will will see if you've learned these expectations? Um, a definition, first of all, function. Uh, a, you'll see variations of this on different textbooks. This is kind of the rest all definition of, of, of a function. It's a rule that associates elements of one set, and the one set's called the domain, with exactly one element of another set called the range. So the idea when you have an element of one set, the function maps it or associates it to exactly one element of another set, one output allowed only. So this is the idea here. If we have an input x, this rule f does something to it. And f is a function if there's only one output. And, and we think of this as y or sometimes as f 
of x, right? This is the output after whatever f into it. Um, we also think of this set. This thing over here is is the input elements. This is the independent variable. Independent variable. Then, of course, the output is the dependent variable. It's the output. Um, that's another way of thinking of a, a function. The the domain is the inputs, and the range is the outputs. Domain is the, is kind of this set. These things all go together, and the range we think of as the answers in the math function. And as we'll see very soon, of course, what we think of is having our inputs on a on a horizontal axis and our outputs on a vertical axis. Ways to represent functions, and we've talked about several of these. It came up in our in our um, more, uh, three minute view question, graphical, and the, see we're going to have examples of functions and non-functions. How can we tell um, a function is a function from a, if we're given its graph? Well, if you remember this from last year, essentially, let me get the right colors and stuff that I want. And this is the I'm going to use the example that we had before, which was a parabola, remember? This is a function. I know it's a function because it passes the vertical line test, right? The idea is, is we um, grab a line, use your pencil or your ruler is the way I think of it usually, and if when I put a vertical line, if it only crosses the the graph in one spot, then it's a function. This is called the vertical line test, right? There's only one spot. And that's the idea for, for each input. It's a vertical line because it's an input. I only get one output, right? This is called the vertical line test. And if I contrast that to a non-function, well, then what does a uh, graph of a non-function look like? Yeah, I figured that would happen. I want my axes to be normal color. There, normal color. But I'll have my example of a of a non-function might be a circle, right? You've seen circles. The idea is the a circle doesn't pass the vertical line test, does it? As soon as I get this figured out, the colors and stuff will be good. Because right there, I see a vertical line. You know, there's some spots where it only hits once, but most of the times it's hitting in two spots. This fails the vertical line test. And we can think of some other non-functions. Uh, an example that, that students often come up with is uh, the idea of a sideways parabola. Sideways parabola fails the vertical line test as well. All right, so numerically, numerically, what does a function look like? Well, different ways of, of representing functions numerically are a table. And we saw a table from, from the warm-up question. And it's the idea of I could have inputs and outputs on a table. The first thing is always the input. And the second thing is the output. And if you check these, these numbers actually fit fit our uh, our warm up question exactly. Um, and this is a this is a function because for each input there's only one output. So what would a, a non function look like in table form? Well, it means for an input, the same input, I'd have two different outputs. So for the same input, I'd have two different outputs which would be silly in our example. A, uh, a width of the hockey rink sometimes gives me an area of 400 or sometimes gives me an area of 300. That doesn't make sense. Um, 
but there are other situations in real life where this might be. Sometimes $10 could buy you 400 marbles, and sometimes you go to another school store, $10 could buy you 300 marbles. So this isn't really a function, right? Because sometimes you get different outputs depending on on um, on where you go or whatever. So uh, a question, see if, if you're following along this idea of a, of a function, is is this one? Is this one okay? Idea here is I've got the same output. Is this allowed in a function? Well, for one input, do I only have one output? This is okay. This actually belongs up here if I wanted to. I know I'm going to write some more stuff in here, so that's why I'm squishing. So this one is actually a function because for each input, I only have one output. It's this what you have to look for for, for non-functions. Um, there are some other ways I can write um, functions numerically, uh, what, what are called ordered pairs. Ordered pairs you'd think of as just points, but essentially it's a table split up, right? So I could, you know, this is an ordered pair. That's implied to be the input and output and so on. Oops, make that a comma. Right. And so on. Uh, and so what would that look like? Well, I'm not even going to bother because um, it's the same as down here, right? It's the same as down here. That if I had two x values that are the same and y values that are different, I'd have a non-function. A new one, a new way to, to represent a function was what, what's called a mapping diagram. I mean, it may or may not be new depending on who you had for grade 11 math last year. Mapping diagrams aren't used very much except for when talking about uh, function concepts when you're just getting going on them. So a mapping diagram looks like this. So we have inputs over here. These are the widths from our, our hockey ring question and then the outputs are another one and this idea of this function maps one to the other All right this was what was this a thousand and so on right. and the function maps one set to another so what would it look like if it was not a function well that means in the domain, the first sets the domain, the second sets the range. In the domain, I'd have an input that led to two different outputs. Sometimes I get 300 and sometimes I get 400. This is not a function. So a question down here, if you're following this, is, is this allowed? Where two inputs have arrows to the same output. This is the same thing as I talked about earlier with the table. This is completely allowed because it's not like I have two outputs stemming from one input. That goes right back to the definition of what a function is that we started with. What we spend most of our time on in math class, of course, is algebraic models and algebraic ways to, to represent functions, and that's these sorts of things that right? we had. Um, that would be one algebraic model, w times w plus, you know, this sort of thing. We often have f at x as our output. You know, these sorts of things. But we see all sorts of functions, even if, you know, this one here, we have one side equal to zero. This is the equation of a line in standard form. It's still a function. It's not in this nice input-output way. These these ones are easy to recognize as functions. Sometimes we have some work to do so that we know it's a function. Right? We turn this into this so we know it's a function. So what would be some examples of non-functions algebraically? Well, ones that aren't functions would be like a vertical line. Right? That's a vertical line, a line that goes straight up and down. That's not a function. 
because for one input, x equals 3, I get an infinite number of out outputs. y could be 1, 2, 3, 0, whatever. Um, equation of a circle, if you remember way back to grade 10, is like this. R squared is the radius, right? So this could be 4 or 10 or whatever. And that's not a function. That's actually a circle. A sideways parabola looks like this. That one there is this one, right? It's kind of like the X and the Y switch places. And notice for one input, for instance, you don't have to write this part down, but for one input, 4, I end up with two outputs. Y could be positive or negative 2, and that's why it's not a function. Not a function because for one input 4, I get two outputs, negative 2 and positive 2. All right, Dandy, that's it. Now, it's very short um, uh, lesson today because we've got this this activity, and this is where we're, we'll start class is with an activity uh, tomorrow or today, depending on when you're watching this video. The homework later, um, and I'll probably go through this in class, but in case you are you get into it and um, you don't know what's going on, uh, when I ha say something like this, this means one to four odds. One odds means skip every other one. Do A, skip B, do C, skip uh, D, and so on. Um, when there's a T next to it, this is a thinking question. A thinking question usually um, is a little bit tougher question. You have to have some sort of insight, and those are separate on the test, of course. And um, I like to tell you which ones feel like thinking questions so you can sp pay special attention to those ones. All right, that's it. Um, activity in class and then to the homework. Congratulations on enduring your first clip video.